This is 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 13. That whosoever would not seek the Lord power of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Recha, Kodash, double honors to my apostles, bishops of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War, back at you again with another lesson. And uh, Lord willing, I pray you're edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Hopefully, you get something from the lesson. That builds upon your faith toward the Lord. All right, because at the end of the day, what are we called for in this truth? We're called in this truth to do a work and to serve the Lord. We're called into this truth to receive salvation. And uh, real quick, a quick, a quick um, scripture come to mind. I want to get um, Ecclesiastes 12 and uh, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. All right, so you do want to keep the commandments to the best of your ability. All right, you're not going to be delivered by keeping all the or keeping the commandments. All right, now you're supposed to rehearse the righteous acts. You're supposed to keep the commandments. But are you going to be saved by keeping the commandments? No, because you can't keep all of the commandments. You know, you got these different camps out here. These these false prophets, these madmen that are setting up stumbling blocks. You know, like uh, IURC. Man, you know, them. I ain't even about to name all these names. But these guys, you know, and this ain't no lesson about them. But, you know, it's in the spirit. It came up. You know, you got now the sons of thunder, you know, going off in prophecy, you know, a, a, a bunch of these groups, man, that in all reality, you know, they're not teaching Yahweh Shai, man. They're not teaching you, you know, the truth. They're teaching truth, but they're not teaching 100% truth. All right. You are to keep the commandments to the best of your ability, but you're not going to be saved for, uh, for keeping the commandments. All right, because you can't keep all of them. We break the law every day. Scriptures say we all fall short of the glory of the Most High. So therefore, we are in debt, man. All right, and we're, we're, we're asking the Lord every day to forgive us for our sins every day. You know, it's not one day that we don't ask. Every day that you are in this truth and you're calling on the name of the Lord, you are asking for forgiveness for your sins, the sins you committed in this life, the sins you committed in your past, all right? We need Yahweh Shah to recover the remnant of his elect. And this is why we in this truth. To do a work. Well, let me say the men. You know, you women too. You have your lot. And that's with your husband. You play your position. You know, you be a, a woman. All right. Which the word woman means, means servant. You know. But for the men that are prophets, they are called to do a work. And in return, they're going to receive salvation. This is what's promised. All right. The Lord is going to activate that new covenant because it's not activated right now. I got to say it again. Like I said, you got these different groups out here and it's a bunch of them and they going off, you know, right at a time where things, the fire is rising, you know, the troubles is near. Jacob's trouble is very near and these guys are setting up stumbling blocks for, for, uh, for the new, you know, for those of the whole four elect that's coming in. For those that really have a, 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 let's say, a calling to believe in the Lord, you know, but it is what it is. So let me read this again. For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment. You heard <laughs> with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So the Lord is going to search you out. He's going to search all of us in all of, all our deeds. All right. He's going to search you out. Starting from the inside to the out. You know, he knows and sees everything, man. So it's important to be what? Sincere. Seek salvation, man. Don't forget why you in this truth, why you were called. We're not in this thing for money. We're not in this thing for reputation, for fame. 
okay we're not in this thing you know to be an american israelite all right i wanted to make a quick point you know because the scriptures do say we shall receive fame in the land where we will put to shame but you know the fame that i'm talking about is guys individually you know looking to be somebody you know this this celebrity in this society all right because we will receive fame all right this is the great awakening and the lord is going to let the world know who is who his people is all right and even his chosen prophets for teaching the word so you know what i'm talking about is the fame all right the fame in which guys want to be celebrities you know they seeking after their own glory all right where in this truth to receive salvation from our Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's why we in this truth. This is what we're out there teaching for. You know, you ever, you know, some guys forget why they out there teaching. You know, a lot of guys join these groups and they don't even know why they out there teaching. They just following a curriculum from their heads and they don't even know what they into. They don't even know why why they just wanted to be a part of the group because it's a big group you know and it comes with perks you know you might get a job you know they might put you on you get uh connections you make to meet somebody you know you might have a little skill from here skill from there you meet that person all oh, marketing man no nah, man yahweh shah is about to destroy this bitch yahweh bahashim yahweh bahashim yahweh shah we need a deliverer, bro. Because what these devils is planning on doing is going to fucking take your soul from you. And a lot of these guys don't really know what's going on because they're not watchers, man. Hey, it may sound like a broken record from a few videos, but fuck it. You know, it's just, hey, got to come out, man. So um, another scripture come to mind real quick as I was speaking. I want to get Romans um 13 and 11 you know and brothers you know i'm singing a song man all right the song must be sung so you are ready this is romans chapter 13 and 11 and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe man and uh joe biden he just had a, a speech and I saw 20 seconds of it, the clip. And he basically mentioned um, that they're going to send troops or what was it? They're going to send tanks to Ukraine. So and today, today I'm announcing that the United States will be sending 31 Abram tanks to Ukraine, the equivalent of one Ukrainian battalion. Secretary Austin has recommended this step because it will enhance the Ukraine's capacity to defend its territory and achieve its strategic objectives. The Abrams tanks are the most capable tanks in the world. <clears throat> They're also extremely complex to operate and maintain. So we're also giving Ukraine the parts and equipment necessary to effectively sustain these tanks on the battlefield. And we begin, we'll begin to train the Ukrainian troops on these issues of sustainment, logistics, and maintenance as soon as possible. So basically, America just stuck you know, their foot in the door. When I say, you know, they, they've been working with Ukraine, but now you can say that officially this is this is going into World War Three. We already seen it, we know it's brewing, but you can say as it started. You know, if he send um it's in that I can't even find it. I gotta get the video. I didn't download it, but if he already sending troops or he's sending tanks in Ukraine to help fight Ukraine against Russia. This is going to turn into a thermonuclear war, which is a third world war. All right. Armageddon. And that's this is all Bible prophecy. So that's why it's important to be awake. You know, scriptures say awake, wake out of sleep, you know, and I mean awake, awake out of sleep from the confusion, you know, from the confusion that's going on out here. You got levels to being awoke. All right. You got certain jokers that know. You know, the industry is demonic. They might have didn't believe in the Illuminati. Now they do. They can tell you who they are. You know, the people, the 1%. You know, you got levels to being awoke. All right. But you got to have 100% truth. If you really awoke, you would know these scriptures. You would know the Heavenly Father's name. You would know the Son's true name. 
okay? You would know uh, who you are as a people, biblic for biblically, you would know who the enemy is, biblically, you know? This is being a wolf and having 100% truth. Uh, of course, knowing the prophecies, you know, the scriptures say, if they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. So you gotta speak according to the word. You don't deny prophecies, you know, because of how you feel. You know, you gotta speak the truth. Yahweh Shai called upon us to do a work, all right, and to continue on speaking the truth until he come. You see? So let me read this again. And that knowing the time that now it is high time, see, high time to awake out of sleep and meaning sleep far as um, mentally, you know, Jake out here too caught up in the folly. They're too caught up in entertainment, you know, you know, entertainment is more important than, you know, the seriousness that's going on in the world, the trouble that's coming. They don't care for the trouble because it's not happening in their neighborhood. It's not so, it's not really in their city yet, but what's happening around the world is going to affect you. All right. World War Three is going to affect you. Okay. The poisons in his waters and foods that Esau is doing. That's a war against you. It's going to affect you. You know, Jake don't man. It says, uh, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So now, all right. Our salvation is nearer, nearer, meaning it's nearer than we, than we actually believe, man. So we almost out of here, man, because the last few prophecies in the Bible, the MOTB, World War Three, all right, Jacob's trouble, it's a couple of prophecies, but the major ones is about to come to pass. So this means we almost out of here, man. And like I said before, you know, if you watching what the ideas and the vision of Esau, all right, the elites, starting with the elites, the ones who control the shot, uh, excuse me, that control the world, call the shots, push the buttons, right, setting forth their agenda, their vision, all right, is to turn you into a transhuman, man. This can't happen, all right? This will make the most high a liar, all right? The scriptures are on point, bro. It's on point, man. You know, the Lord has to come back and deliver us from this devil. We need Yahweh Shai, man. Because he's the only one that can get us out of this. It was the Most High who put it, put us in it. And he's the one that's going to take us out. So let me get that scripture real quick. You know, I'm just hitting my favorite scriptures. Right. Um, let me get this real quick. This is Baruch chapter 4 and 18. For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Is that it? I believe that's it. Hold on. Okay, let me read that again. It says, um, Baruch chapter 4 verse 17. But what can I help you? For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Go your way, O my children, go your way, for I am left desolate. I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. Be of good cheer, O my children, cry unto the Lord. See, you're supposed to be crying unto the Lord right now. All right, we're crying unto the Lord for his return. We're crying unto the Lord for us to return back unto him. We need Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Cry unto the Lord, and he will deliver you from the power in the hand of the enemies. So, woo! <laughs> oh, man, that excites me because the Lord is bound by his word, man. <laughs> the Lord is, is true, okay? The word of the Lord is true, and he's bound by his word. So, this is another scripture that comes to my mind that I'm going to have to store, Lord willing. Hope it sticks. Because like Elder Apostle Tahar said many couple of years ago, all right, in the Breaking Strongs, he was saying, you know, I remember um, he was saying you can um, compromise with the Lord. I believe that might be the word if I'm saying it right. But basically, you know, when you're praying and when you're going through things, you know, you can call on the Lord and say, Lord, hey, you know, you said it right here, even though the Lord knows. 
But the scriptures say, be of good cheer. So we're supposed to be of good cheer right now. You ain't supposed to be all afraid and, you know, feeling sad and scary. No, we about to go into the kingdom, which is our kingdom. All right. So these are exciting times, man. We want this thing to happen. Esau, hey, we want Esau to go and force that karagma because that fulfills prophecy. We want uh, them to go into this World War III because that fulfills Bible prophecy. All right. You can't say you believe in the Lord like some of these Christian groups, you know, and then they want to pray away from World War III or pray away and want Esau to, you know, not, you know, do what he do. No, we want E to do what he do because it's Bible prophecy. We got to get to that next step, that next level. You know, we're trying to turn the page, man. We're trying to stay on the damn chapter. We're trying to get past this chapter and move on to the new chapter. The scriptures tell you in 2nd Edger 6, Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, man. We're trying to get to where Jacob is ruling. So we're going to have to get through these, these rough times, man. These evil times. All right. So the scriptures say, be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Lord, and he will deliver you from the power and the hand of the enemy. And Esau is a true enemy of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Number one enemy of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Just check his vision out and his ideas for the future. That's all, man. Just check it out. Look him up, man. All right. It says, For my hope is in the everlasting. That he will save you and joy is come unto me from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but Yahweh will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. <sighs> like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity so shall they see shortly your salvation from our power which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting <laughs> i can't help it man <laughs> let me read it again like as now the neighbors of zion of zion, of zion have seen your captivity so shall they see shortly your salvation from our power which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting my children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the most high for thou enemies for thine enemies have persecuted thee but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck <laughs> it says my delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto the Most High, Yahweh, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. And we're being remembered right now, man. We are being remembered. All right? That's why you have a great awakening happening all over the world. All right? The Lord's chosen people are finding out who they truly are. The Hebrew Israelites, man. All right, the sons of Jacob, you know, it says, and you daughters of Israel, right? It says, verse 28, for as it was your mind to go astray from the most high, so being returned, seek him 10 times more. For he that brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. And that's what this lesson's about. Call out loud, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, all right? Because I'm I'm gonna title the lesson seek seek seeking salvation. Seeking salvation. It says, For he that brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. That's why we called in this thing, man. You know? That's why we hit them highways and hedges. Them highways and byways, man. Alright? And we prophesize. Hoping that the Lord fulfill prophecy. He wake up his elect. You know, he bring to pass what his word word have said. Because his word, his word, all right, is also is written that we're going to see salvation. Matter of fact, let's read it again. It says, 
For as it was your mind to go astray from the Most High, so be in return, seek him ten times more. For he that brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. So we have a salvation coming. All right. We have salvation coming, man. All right. It says, verse 10, uh, excuse me, verse 30. Take a, take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Miserable are they that afflict thee and rejoice at thou fall. Miserable are the cities which the children served. Let me read it again. Miserable are the cities which thou children served. Miserable is she that received thou sons. For as she rejoiced at thou ruin and was glad at thou fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. Man, all praises to Yahweh Bashem Shai. You other nations gonna pay. All right, you Edomites is going to pay, man. All right, you're going to pay for what you've done, man. So, um, now I want to jump into a few precepts I had jotted down. I want to go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 15, 13. It says that whosoever would not seek Yahweh, the God of Israel, which is the power of Israel, should be put to death. Neat, uh, uh, excuse me, whether small or great, whether man or woman. So, for whoever, which is Israelites, that won't seek the Most High, you will be what it says should be put to death, man. You're gonna be put to death, man. All right, the scriptures tell us in Second Edges 9, they must know it after death by pain, meaning you're gonna get this truth after the Most High put you to death, man. The Lord also has written. That he have uh, two thirds, all right. That's that that shall be destroyed, man. And that one third shall be left, uh, 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 shall be saved. Matter of fact, let me go to that real quick. Um, this is the book of Zechariah, chapter thirteen and and, and uh, eight. It says, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, say of Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And I will refine them as silver is refined. And I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name. And I will hear them. I will say it is my people. And they shall say Yahweh is my power. Alright. So the Lord said two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. Alright. So the Lord is going to deal with his people. All right, and that two thirds is right here in Babylon. All right, Babylon the Great, if you was wondering. So the scriptures say that whosoever would not seek Yahweh, the power of Israel, should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. That's why it's important to wake out of sleep. All right, it's important to wake out of sleep. Matter of fact, I want to grab a scripture that's come to mind. I quoted it. I quoted it earlier. Um, oh wait, there you go. Right, this is Isaiah chapter 52 and one. It says, awake, awake, put on thou strength, O Zion. Put on thou beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more be, there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust, arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captivity, daughter of Zion. For thus saith Yahweh, ye have sold yourselves for naught. And ye shall be redeemed without money. All right. So the scriptures say, uh, shake thyself from the dust, meaning the confusion. You know, you, you're not supposed to be, you know, well, let me say this. You're supposed to shake yourself from the confusion, man. But really, it's the Lord that calls upon you and shakes you from that confusion. Because other than that, you're going to be asleep. The Lord is dealing with what? His elect. So it says, shake thyself from the dust. 
Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyselves from the bands of thy neck, O captivity, daughter of Zion. For thus saith Yahweh, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Just wanted to bring that out. Now let's get this scripture. This is Ephesians chapter 2 and 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the Most High. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So the scriptures say, for by grace are you saved through faith. So you got to have faith, man. You got to have faith. Right now we're under grace. And we're and, and, and at this point we have to have faith. Because the scriptures say, um, without faith it is impossible to please him. So that means also through our faith we, we are pleasing Yahweh Bashim Yahweh All right? He said, without faith, it is impossible to please him. You see? It's impossible to please him. Because you can't say you have faith, all right, and you don't exercise it. When, when times of trouble come and you don't use faith, you don't have it, man. All right? Faith is a gift. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith that it is not of yourselves. It is the gift of the Most High. It says... Not of works, least any man should boast. Moving on, this is Romans 10 and 8. But what say it? The word is nigh. Excuse me. But what say it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord, Yahawashai, and shalt believe in thy heart that the Most High have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scriptures say, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And a lot of these guys in these different camps are ashamed of Yahweh Shai. You know, they might act like they're not, but they are in their teachings, man. Because if you was not ashamed of Yahweh Shai, you would speak the truth in Yahweh Shai. You would speak of prophecy. You would bring it out. Instead of denying prophecy, man. So let me read that again. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Because you have to confess. All right? It says, For the scriptures say, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So if you believe on the Lord, you're not going to be ashamed, man. You're not going to be ashamed of teaching the truth in the scriptures, even if it's controversy. You know, I'm thinking of the great, the, the, the gape, you know, the, the, the great, you know, you know, that topic, which is very simple. It's law, you know, it's laws to it. When this situation happened, go into the law. What happened? You, you understand how to deal with the situation, you know, so it's really nothing to be ashamed of. If you're ashamed of the word, because the scriptures say the Lord comes in the volume of the book. If you are offended in any part, you are ashamed and offended in the Lord. All right? That's why that goes for you women. You know, you want to, uh, you know, say you believe you're an Israelite, which, you know, most of you are that do believe, but you have to be a doer of the word. You know, you ain't going to be delivered and you denying scriptures. You denying the truth. It don't work that way, man. The Lord said he looks within the inward part of man, not the outward part. You know, women... Certain men, you know, I get on the women, but even men. Now the guys got, all these guys out here, they just, they don't even try to make garments anymore. They just put on a shirt and then have their woman or take it to a store and have them sew on some fringes on a t-shirt nowadays, man. Every group that come out, it's shirt and, it's shirt and fringes, man. You don't even make regular garments, you don't even make the, the, the garments anymore. You know, shirt garments. That's all it is, it ain't even a garment. A shirt and fringes, man. You know, as soon as I see a shirt and fringes, I know they off, you know, from the rip. They ain't really coming out and speaking 100 percent truth. There's always something in there that, you know, is bogus, man. You know, for the most part, they teach truth because they're telling you an Israelite. But you got to be a doer of the word. You got to be a you have to be not just a hearer, but a doer of the word, man. And you have to be honest. You know, like I said, you could get on the women, but you can get on these men, too, you know. But some of these guys, they just false prophets, man. It's on the outward appearance. They look like these guys. They, they trying to rep Israel. But really, 
these guys ain't for Israel, man. They really for their own belly. Fame, reputation, money, you know, whatever it is. But it ain't for faith. Apostle Paul said if it's not a faith, then it's sin. You know, so when you eat this word, you want to eat it with faith. You're not eating this word, all right, for your own uh, pleasures. You eating this word for faith, all right? You want faith in Yahweh Bashim Shai. You don't want to be carnal minded. You're supposed to be spiritual minded, you know? So anyway, let's move on. This is Titus chapter three and five. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercies, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Woo! It says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done because the brothers are putting in the work week in, week out, in season, out of season, during the week, brothers doing their epistles, sit downs, brothers gathering and putting this work out, you know, faithfully, man. All right. All around the clock, you know, but the scriptures say not by works of righteousness, which ye have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. That proves we're under grace. We haven't saw salvation yet. You know, we're looking to see salvation. We're looking forward to seeing the Lord change us and activate the new covenant. Take the laws, you know, take the stony heart out and give us the, uh, the heart of flesh. Put the laws into our inward parts. We're looking forward to that. Right. It says, but according to his mercy... He saved us according to his mercy by the washing of regeneration. All right. In which regeneration re means back and uh, generation, I believe, is seed. Matter of fact, let me do something real quick. It's been a minute. So let me just tap in. It's lock you. This is the etymology, regeneration, the act of regenerating or producing a new. Matter of fact, let me do this. Regeneration. Re means back. Oh, Salakia. Let me see. Right. Re means back again. Generation means to bring forth. All right. Bring forth again. This is the dictionary.com. Um, it says from regeneration or else from Latin. I don't know how to say this. Let's see. Regeneratus. Regeneratus. It says um, to bring forth again. Regenerated, regenerate and replace early regeneration. Right. So we, the point is, re means back again. Generation means to bring forth. So now when we go back to the scripture. The scriptures say, Titus 3 and 5, not by works of, of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. All right. So let's move on. This is Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. All right. So salvation ain't coming from nowhere else. This is why we. This is why. We need Yahweh Shai to return because salvation is coming through him. It was Yahweh Shai who gave his body as a living sacrifice. All right. We need a savior. You know, it says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men 
whereby we must be saved. So it's important to know the true name of the Father and the Son. All right. The scriptures say the the um the uh what it say the righteous uh the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. All right. So that means that those of the Lord's hopeful elect is going to know his name. And you got to call on the right name. Guess what? That's a stumbling block. Because you got other camps out here calling on different names. All right? You even got Esau. He's trying to get into the Hebrew now. You know, he's calling on Yah. He's calling on Yahweh. Or Yahweh you know, because he knows that that name, uh, as far as Jesus, don't exist. You know? So he's trying to go deep because he's watching videos of the prophets, different camps, getting into the Hebrew. And it only makes sense because it's the truth. What was Yahweh Shai? What was his nationality? He was a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah. What language did Yahweh Shai speak? He spoke Hebrew. So what was his name in? His name was in the Hebrew tongue. All right. So there you go, man. Neither is there any salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We must be saved. This is St. John chapter 14, verse 6. Yahweh Shai say unto him, I am the way, the truth, and, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him. And have seen him. So Yahweh Shai said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Showing you Yahweh Shai is the door. Alright? He's the door. Okay? You can't get to the Father unless you go through Yahweh Shai. You had groups like Sakari. You know, I don't know if they still feel the same. But I remember a few years ago, he was, you know, making his statements about how we're not supposed to worship Yahweh Shai, you know, as if Yahweh Shai is, is not um, the high priest. All right. Going back to the orders of Melchizedek, you know, because he was called himself the, the, the chief Ephraim priest, whatever. I mean, excuse me, chief Ephraim. That's the other guy. Uh, the high priest, you know. And uh, as if he was going to take the role of Yahweh Shai. He told Apostle Sahar he need to retire. You know, it's many, it's a lot of shit out here, man. With these different groups. You know? Because they have their own way. See, us brothers here at Great Millstone, we follow the scriptures, man. Alright? We strictly, solely follow the scriptures and we defend it. We defend the scriptures. We defend this other gospel. Making sure that this gospel stay pure and true. Alright? That's why these other camps get mad at us because brothers reprove them. Brothers go into rebuking them, you know, and they know what it is too. None of these groups are taking these reproofs. They're not taking these rebukes well. All right. And that's going to lead to your, your destruction because the Lord is, is, is showing you love by correcting you. You know, he's showing you love by correcting you. He's using his men to correct you to save your life. But these guys are prideful. They make their response videos, you know, and, and they mad as hell because you came against them. You dudes need to, you got to come out of America, man. You got to take your mindset out of this fucking wicked society. You got to throw away that old man, you know. You got to throw away that old man, man. You got to become that new creature. You got to be able to take reproof and correction, you know. And stop living for some reputation. That's going to lead to your destruction. Not only you, but your family, man. You dudes don't really understand, man. You know? But as soon as you try to correct Jake, Jake, you know, he, tur he turned around and want to kill you. Because, you know, you did a video on him. You know? You're supposed to take the correction. Do your research. You know? That's the Lord showing love. You know? Jake went the most high, want Yahweh Shai to come to them directly. You know, tired of hearing that shit, man. Dudes talking about, you know, the Lord got to show me, you know, or the Lord, you know, the, the Lord got to reveal that to me. You know, listen, man, Lord ain't got to do nothing for you. 
You know, we supposed to be as humble servants, man. You know, we're grateful for the little bit that we have in the Lord, especially the vision to see, to understand the scriptures, man. You know, you should be thankful, man, for the little that you have. You was called, you know, you're supposed to be thankful, man. You know, the Lord got to show me. Lord, the Lord got to reveal this to me. Who the fuck is you? You know? Anyway, anyway, you know, because the Lord is dealing with his men. You know, that's why it's best to stay humble, stay lowly, and wait patiently, man. Pray without ceasing. Stay humble and wait patiently, you know? And hopefully the Lord reveal things to you so that, look, all right, I see it now, man. I get it. You know, you want you want to be in the right spirit with the Lord. You want the truth. That's why we in this thing, man. We want salvation. You ain't you can't be. You know, look, man. Who am I to say who the Lord will save? I hope the Lord deliver me and the brothers, man. All right, brothers here in Great Millstone, because the Lord He has His way. But I'll tell you this: if you teaching lies. And you, and you took a bag, you sold Israel out, you ain't making it, man. You ain't making it. Now, if the Lord turn around, or God turn around, and he end up repenting, and the Lord accepts his repentance for whatever, and he of the elect, he of the elect, you know? But that's a dangerous game to be playing, man. That's very dangerous, man. I don't want to be teaching lies. I want to teach the truth, man. You know? I'm hoping that, you know... Hey, hopefully the Lord save you and your family, man. You know, hope he save, you know, me. Shit. You know, it's all about salvation, man. You know, I'm, I'm going to end it with that. I still like if I'm ranting a little bit, just a little bit on my mind. This lesson is going to be entitled Seeking Salvation. Because at the end of the day, that's what we call for in this truth. It's to receive salvation. I got the picture in the background. You know, brother's familiar with the picture. You know, I've seen brothers having it. You know, on their on they lessons and things And that is a prophecy You know, that's what Edris saw He saw one taller than all the rest You know, putting crowns on these men heads And it men You know, women standing among them Those are men Alright, because the men Are the heads of the house Alright They are the divine judges You know They are the ones that's gonna You know, have the crown on their head Judging the other nations You see and this was a prophecy that Edris saw. So this is a beautiful picture. Whoever, you know, made this picture, you know, beautiful picture, man. You know, I just hope that you can't wait for it to come true, to manifest. And I hope to be a part of one of those men there, man. You know, we all brothers here in Great Millstone hope to be a part of one of those men among Yahweh Shai getting crowned, man. So with that, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Recha. Kodash, double honors to my apostles, bishops of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.